Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Enigmatico 6. How are you guys doing today? How's life? So what was I doing? Well, I just wanted some perks, you know, for extra hearts. We don't need these anymore. Bye bye. In this empire, we do not keep things that are redundant. Anyways, I have been thinking, we are approaching the end of the series. Well, I mean, we're not at the end of the series, but in a few episodes, we have to start wrapping things up. What does it mean for us? Well, it does mean that I have not done most of the things that I wanted to do. For example, out of tools dimensions. We were supposed to go to a few dimensions and I kind of forgot. So let us start doing that. In 1.16, RF tools dimension has gone through a change, meaning that in addition to the normal parts that we need in order to make dimlets, we also need blobs. There are three different tiers of blobs and each one of them is going to drop a different dimensional essence. And you can literally see that we need them in order to craft different modules. So maybe it is time for us to start going to a dimension and start finding these blobs. I'm not exactly sure if anything else has changed, so what we're going to do is that we're just going to make a random dimension and we're going to call it test. We're going to have a few tests, so maybe test one. Empty dimension tab, store. Now we have a realized dimension. So you, my dear friend, you go inside the dimension builder and that is fast. Oh, visual effects. <laughs> nice. I also think it's wise to chunk load the place. You know, just in case. I'm also going to carry a phased field generator just in case the dimension loses power so that we don't die. So we are going to dial dimension number one. Are we alive? Are we good? Horrible dimension. Thank you. Oh, it's from Botania. <laughs> Interesting. Oops, uh, I didn't notice it's lava. So our main question is... Yes, that is how a blob looks like. And they have a ton of health. <laughs> Come on, drop the thing. Yes, we have 10. And that was a rare one. Sampling is going to be very important. We have three tiers of blobs. We take one sample of each. You are a common one. They don't really move, do they? Or they just poison you? I don't know. I just wanted to mention that the common ones are very common. Oh, look what I found. Uh, something. Am I going into the void? No. You know, the first blob that I killed, that was a very stupid decision. Oh, you're a rare one. Uh, you come with me. He's alive. So if that is the case, we just need the legendary one, which um, I'm guessing it's not going to be that common. Flying around really fast is not a very good idea because we need to give mobs a chance to spawn. So maybe I take a walk. Also, I'm kind of short on wood and I was very lazy to make a tree farm. Uh, we take some. So this is interesting and probably a little bit laggy. I have no idea what happened here. He also seems to be confused. Are you? So it seems that blobs are hostile mobs and we cannot find them in an open area. You would expect that if I wait for night time, well, I should be able to find them. But the problem is, the sun isn't moving. So there's not going to be a night time in this dimension and maybe I have to go dungeon hunting for them. I don't like the dungeons. It's Y level 9 and it's just the void. What the hell is this? Lucky Scarf. Applies an extra level of fortune to mind blocks. That would have been useful. You know, a bit earlier in the game. Honestly, this dimension is amazing for dungeon hunting. I was also under the impression that we would be able to find those old houses from RF Tools dimension where you can find dimlets. And so far I have not seen any. I found a house. Oh, it's just a Valhelsia house thingy. Hello. Okay, I'll tell you what. We are going to go back home. Uh, so you, my dear friend. You're garbage. And we are going to start making a new dimension. The problem is that if you put this guy inside, it's going to make you the same dimension because we do not have any dimlets inside. But if we want to have another random dimension, we need a digit dimlet. There is digit dimlet 0 to 9. You're going to be called test 2. And this is a new random dimension. I can actually show you. If I put an empty one inside and call it, I don't know, test 3, it's going to be test 1 again. So you, my dear friend, make my new dimension and we are going to dial it again. I hope we are good. Oh my goodness, this is garbage. <laughs> what is this? Bucket of molten nickel. Okay, now we know. And it's everywhere. But on a very positive note, we have the houses from RF Tools Dimension and it's night time. Meaning that we are going to find tons of mobs and maybe our legendary blob. They sound weird. And the rare ones have a crazy amount of health. <laughs> I'm worried about the legendary ones. So what kind of dimlets are we going to get? Lead ore. Again, lead ore. Molten bronze. Okay, we take it. I don't have any other options. Also, we have this lost knowledge in the recent update, but we are also getting it from our mob farm. So it's not that important if we collect it. Molten iron. Molten iron. Oh, it was all. I haven't seen them in a while. 
I should have taken him home, but it's too late for that. A black stone and the river. Okay, what has me worried is that maybe I have to go to a rare dimension to find the legendary blob. Molten Arcane. I uh, don't know what that is. Oh, it's Arcane Gold from Eidolon. It has a day and night cycle. Interesting. Okay, so it seems that I have been correct. I just went to Reddit and there was a post by MacJD, the designer of RF Tools Dimension, and he was explaining how blobs are going to spawn. It's not a massive post or a wiki, but it does explain quite a bit, and for us, that is good enough. According to that post, there is a chance that we are going to find a legendary blob which we need in order to make the legendary dimlets, even in this dimension. But the chances are going to be garbage. And how do we increase that chance? Well, the higher the power consumption of a dimension is, there is a higher chance of getting higher tier blobs. So essentially what I'm trying to do at this very moment, that is an interesting building and nothing is inside, okay. <laughs> I am very sorry, I do get distracted a lot when I'm in RF Tools dimensions because I like random dimensions. Hello. Basically what I'm trying to say is that I'm looking for dimlets which are not common. You know, this one is rare, heavy water. Or I even actually found something legendary, netherite. But netherite is something that we need, bedrock is not. So maybe we use that one. Because that should have a crazy power consumption. Actually, we kind of have what we need. I'm only here for my own curiosity. Maybe we should just go home. And make the dimlet. That wither bar scares me every single time. We want the new dimension to consume as much power as possible. So first off, we are going to have a biome for it. Uh, which is going to be a desert, I don't really care. Then we are going to have the block dimlet for bedrock. And yes, we do have an error. Because we also need a feature, hollow spheres. Now it's fine. So it is going to be a desert with floating hollow spheres of bedrock. Let us hope that we don't spawn in one of those hollow spheres, but I think we should be good. Maintenance cost is like 1000 RF. That's it? Uh, where's the garbage one? That was 40. Okay, it's 25 times more. We have a better chance. Oh, this one takes a bit of time. Also, I'm not really sure if you have a legendary dimlet, maybe you can recycle it to get the legendary dimensional essence. But I don't really know, so we're just gonna go to the dimension. Uh, so you, my dear friend, dial bedrock. Are we good? Let's hope so. Yeah, we do have spheres of bedrock, but it's just the void. This is going to be painful. How am I supposed to find the blob? Maybe I should have put the desert after the feature. It does seem that this dimension also has a day and night cycle, so maybe we find something during the night. Well, actually we can't. Nothing spawns on bedrock. That was my bad. I'm sorry. But maybe over here? Things do spawn here. This was a horrible... What the hell? I love this door. Please tell me I can take it. It's even a 3x3. Three three. Yes, you can take it. Perfection. Who cares about the blobs? Let us find some doors. Unless you can craft them. Oh no, you can't. I found another one. Perfect. Uh, can I take the jars? No. But I think you can actually craft the jars, so it's not that important. Okay. There are so many viruses. <laughs> it's like I have to make a security terminal, then hack my own security terminal, then put a worm in order to unhack my security terminal. Yeah, this is getting laggy. Let us go home. I don't remember if this was always a thing or not, but if you put your realized dimension tab inside your dimension scriber, you can actually extract all the dimlets. So I just made a few adjustments. Instead of bedrock, we have netherite, because why the hell not? And the desert goes in last. I'm not really sure, but maybe this will fix it. But the maintenance cost has gone lower. That is weird. You would think that blocks of netherite are actually going to be more useful than bedrock, but I don't know, I didn't make the mod. Yes. Spheres of netherite. And is this the wrong stupid desert that I'm making? Uh, maybe I'm making a mistake, I don't know. Cause you know, we still have the void. But at least, it's useful void. Give me my netherite. Thank you. Extended vein mining. Oh, you're slow. Very slow. I was never great at making random dimensions and I screwed it up again. Cause you know, we don't really want the void. What if we try to readjust it? Certus Quartz? Did they add applied energistics? No. That was weird. So the main reason that I wanted to get into RF Tools Dimension as soon as possible is that we are short on a few resources, and apparently storage. You guys have been telling me that I should start making the huge storage cells, the problem is, they're incredibly expensive. So for example, we need 14,000 quartz and 7,600 redstone. And considering that I also need a crazy amount of redstone in order to make induction cells, you see, 2,600, I really want to have a dimension for redstone. 
So maybe we start making a functional mining dimension. Because the thing is, after we get more resources that we want to add to the dimension, we can just do it inside the inscriber. The way this works is that Endermen are going to start dropping lost knowledge. A legendary lost knowledge is very rare, <laughs> so for the moment, we're not going to get any. Although maybe we can start converting some. Yeah, for the moment, we have three of them. And then when you put them inside the Dimlet Researcher, they're going to give you a very rare resource. It takes a bit of time, but it is telling us that it is going to be a legendary block and apparently it's also valid for apiaries. That has to go inside the knowledge holder so that we can read it inside the Dimlet workbench. I don't really know what that is, but if we remove everything, it's going to be block of netherite and ancient debris. Okay, that's good to know. If we want it to be a valid mining dimension, we need to specify a few features. So we need to start making dimlets. Obviously, we need to start by making empty feature dimlets, and then we can start fixing them inside the dimlet workbench. But just before doing that, maybe we can have a very garbage automation for this guy. I'm tired of extracting dimlets, uh, this should do it automatically, and we get extra knowledge. The features that we have unlocked so far are cubes, hollow cubes, and liquid cubes. Obviously, we don't want anything hollow or liquid, so we're going to go with cubes. If we hover over it, it is telling us that we need to have one stone, dimensional shards, and two modules. And guess what? This dimensional shard doesn't work. You have to convert it. So let us make a dimlet for cubes. There you go. And I think I did manage to find redstone. Yeah, maybe I was wrong. I did not find redstone. Oh, no, no, no. I did. Here it is. So we want it to be redstone ore, and we want it in cubes. And can we have it inside the void? I don't know. So you, my dear friend, dial once, and let us go check it out. <laughs> cubes of redstone. That's so nice. I don't really know how you're going to get rid of the dungeons, but it's okay. They can stay there. Uh, another question is, you're not hollow, right? Nope, that is the case. Maybe we should start mining some redstone. I did bring silk touch so that we can set a filter, but that is granite. I don't know if it's going to work. Yes, yes, we want this one. And obviously it should be whitelisted so that we can actually harvest it. And then we need to set up the quarry. This seems to be okay. We just have to increase the range. 512 by 512. Uh, in this version, this stupid thing is incredibly laggy. <laughs> did I crash? Are we good? No. Ah, nice. We're good. So I do have an ender chest and this is a fortune quarry. It's good for redstone. And let us see how our mining operation is going to go. Terrible. Where are you mining? Oh yes, we are mining something. We're getting redstone. I just don't know where it's mining. Oh, it's over there. No, that's me. <laughs> yes, I was wondering where it's mining. It's mining right here. And we are gaining a decent amount of redstone. I'm happy. I can order more induction cells. A 10. I think this place also has to be chunk loaded for the quarry to work and we are going to have a little bit of problem because our refined storage system is not inputting the items fast enough. Later on, depending if we want to go with mechanism or not, we are also going to have a cube for uranium. Or maybe a sphere. But for the moment, we're good. Except that I haven't found the legendary blob. I just noticed that I made a very small boo-boo. Uh, the quarry was set on hollow. It has to be a solid box for obvious reasons. But now that I have actually fixed it, we have a ton of redstone. Almost a quarter of a million. Another thing that I forgot is that I forgot the filter. So we got a lot of junk. Another discovery that I have made is that this door is beautiful. I just love it. Anyways, let us get to the main task at hand. The problem is that I have not unlocked all the dimlets, so I cannot unlock all the features and all the biome controllers. That means that we're still far far away from making the ideal mining dimension. But at least now that I have my redstone, <laughs> we're having induction cells, we're having storage disks. But in any case, that is not a horrible thing, we cannot focus on one mod for the entire episode. It gets boring. I will do more research, I will try to unlock more features and dimlets, and maybe next episode, we can have an ideal mining dimension. Although, Endermen also drop dimlets. That's a thought. Yeah, it didn't go so well. After 100, I just got one dimlet. Two episodes ago when I made this reactor room, there were a few comments suggesting something as an alternative to our induction matrix. Can you guess what it is? It is the ender cell from power. Because you know, if you have an ender cell, you have to fill it in with energy cells and apparently you can fill it infinitely. So you will have infinite power in just one block. I don't think it's going to be infinite, but I do admit it's going to be a lot. But I had a problem with it. The capacity of one nitro energy cell in power is 140 million RF. One induction cell is 1.6 trillion. So as a very rough estimate, you need one million of these instead of one of these. 
So either my calculation is wrong, which does happen quite often, I do admit. Or I don't really understand how this guy works, which also happens a lot. So if you know, please let me know. Otherwise, you know, this induction matrix can hold 24 trillion RF. It's almost 1.8 million of these. Anyways, let us get back to our unfinished project from last episode. Mana generation. Last episode we made this guy and we ran into two problems. One of them was to get wool, which was relatively solved by a crazy farm and we have 57,000 flax. Actually almost 58,000 and 1.9 million redstone. You know, I have to wait until it's 2 million. 2 million redstone. Good. I have not read your comments on the previous episode because it hasn't been out yet and therefore I have no idea if you had a better solution than the dye mixer or not. I'm going to go with this. And yes, I have made 15 more. Don't you worry. And the way that we are going to do this is going to be incredibly stupid. I'm confused. Meaning that, for example, we are going to produce the red dye so that we can also make the red dye inside the dye mixer. Why? Symmetry purposes. And to get us started with, we are going to go with two phytogenic insulators because we only need two dyes. Didn't I order more? The way that the dye mixer works is that you need to provide it with red, blue, and green dye, and it will generate you any dye that you want. Blue dye is going to be incredibly easy because we have almost 94,000 lapis. Don't make me wait. I had to wait until it's 94,000. Red is roses. And green is going to be a fern. Like this one. Oh, this is still working. Aha. So what happens to the emeralds? Well, it's not chunk loaded all the time. I'm guessing it's fine. Uh, the question is, are you linked to anything? No. We have a free one. So if we set up something around here, it wouldn't be a bad idea, because this is technically a greenhouse. Using our amazing refined storage system, we are going to export Phytogrow inside the phytogenic insulators. Yeah, actually both of them. I think we can also export water. Yes, that is true. Out of curiosity, can you do it from the JEI? Oh, you can. That's nice. Each one of them is going to get a cyclical processing augment, as well as a resident upgrade kit. And yes, I'm still using 1.12 names. Sue me. That basically means that they are going to work super fast and they are always going to keep one of the items inside their inventories. And they're going to output into an enrichment chamber. So your output, input from the back and the bottom. I think we're good. Is it a blood moon? No. <laughs> I was confused. Okay, that is good. We're getting the phyto grow, we're getting water, everything is going to need speed upgrades and obviously power. I know that it is very boring to use Xnet for everything, but remember, we don't have ender IO conduits. And that is the best automation system that I know at this very moment. Anyways, if it was not obvious enough, we are going to use Xnet for automation. So extracting energy from the quantum entangler porter and inserting it into the machines. They should be working. I think. Yes, yes, very good. You have not been configured? So there you go. Yes, now it's fine. The problem is we're getting so many red dyes. I don't like that. If that is the case, I need an extra drawer to keep the dyes. Everything that you see over here is going to be hidden, so don't you worry. Yeah, I can technically do this. And you should be able to output to the front. Yes, perfection. And you also get a void upgrade, and I have no idea why you used my crying obsidian. That is my problem with refined storage. It takes the most weird material in order to craft something. Just for example, if I want to make a furnace, it's using andesite. Why aren't you using diorite? I have no idea. Use the garbage one. Now that we are generating the two dyes that we were missing, it's time to produce the rest of the dyes. But this is going to be much bigger than I thought. This is probably a very weird way of doing everything, but I'm happy with the result because it's symmetrical. The only problem that I have is that for some reason they removed that drawer which had only three inventories and we're stuck with this one. And just to keep it full, here is a face field generator. But essentially what we are doing is that we have two phytogenic insulators, one of them is making us red dye and the other one is making us green dye. The blue dye is being exported by our system by converting lapis and every single dye that we are producing is being extracted from the drawers and being inserted into the dye factories. Which now that I'm thinking they don't have any power. And yes, I know that I can press Ctrl V if you have a giant microphone in front of your face, it's kind of difficult. And it's also dark and I'm blind. But each and every one of these guys is set to a different dye and we are getting all 16 of them. The only problem is green dye. It's not cactus, it's this one for some reason. And it's pain in the glass without the GL. Cause now I have to change a few recipes. Everything that we are making in the dye factories are going to go inside the drawer controller and we're going to have... That's not going to be symmetrical. We're going to use some trims and then we are going to have the drawers. That should work. You know, we have 16 machines, 16 slots. So we have to insert everything into the controller, therefore we need another channel on insert. And the rest of you are going to be on extract. And with that, we should get all 16 dies. Perfection. 
Did you mess up or no? Yeah, exactly. All of them are different. Good. Don't use crying obsidian, please. That is all 16 dice. Drawers are locked and they all have a void upgrade. And literally the only thing that we have to do over here, except covering everything so that it doesn't look garbage, is an external storage. That is a cable. Yes, external storage. And we just connect it to our system. Now if we use the quantify key, some of them should get used. Yes, they are. Good, 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 good. Because, you know, now we have access to the dice and this guy should be crafting a crazy amount of wool. Yeah, it's kind of stupid and laggy. I have already made a crazy amount of upgrades. Let us upgrade our crafters over here. Everything is set and all the droppers are full of wool. So now we need a mechanism to stop the entire system whenever we're out of wool. I personally don't think that we're going to run out of dice anytime soon, but there is a high chance that we're going to run out of wool. So we need to give instructions to our Botania system over here so that whenever we're out of dice, it should stop working. You're not connected. Is that okay? I don't know. And basically what I want to do is that whenever we have less than 4,000 flax, uh, I want this guy to emit a redstone signal. Uh, when under, yes. That signal will go to a timer which is set for 10 seconds and that timer is going to activate the mana burst. That works. Maybe 10 seconds is too much. Yeah, but it's fine. We're not in a hurry. Also, I am going to read the comparator signal out of the mana pool so that whenever it's getting full, it should also turn off the clock. So something like this should be fine. But that is a crazy amount of mana. I just connected the redstone. Very good. I'm happy. And the main reason that everything looks garbage is that everything is going to be covered. So don't you worry. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.